In the softly lit halls of the newly established Global Coalition for Interstellar Cooperation, GCIC headquarters, Dr. Arav Singh stood before a large window, gazing out at the bustling city below. The world had changed dramatically since the return from Suryavansha, with nations that once harbored deep-seated rivalries now working together towards a common goal. This unity, born out of necessity to face the Kralian threat and harness the opportunities provided by their alliance with Suryavansha, was a profound testament to humanity's capacity for cooperation in the face of existential challenges. However, Arav was acutely aware of the delicate nature of this newfound unity. As he prepared for his address to the GCIC assembly, he reflected on the diplomatic and social hurdles that still lay ahead. Unity is not merely about standing together against a common enemy, he mused aloud, his words echoing slightly in the quiet room. It's about understanding and respecting our differences, forging a path that benefits all, not just the few. His speech needed to reinforce the successes while acknowledging the ongoing challenges. As he stepped up to the podium, the representatives from around the world turned their attention towards him, a silent acknowledgement of his leadership and the respect he had garnered over the past tumultuous months. Ladies and gentlemen, Arav began, his voice firm yet imbued with warmth. Today we stand as a united front, a coalition not of convenience, but of conviction. We have seen what we can achieve when we set aside our differences and work towards a common goal. Our joint efforts have brought about technological advancements, strengthened our defenses, and deepened our cultural connections. He paused, allowing his words to resonate. Yet, we must not be complacent. The fabric of unity is woven from continuous threads of dialogue, compromise, and mutual respect. It is fragile and requires constant care and dedication. We must continue to engage with each other openly, address grievances respectfully, and distribute the fruits of our cooperation equitably. The room was attentive, the weight of his words not lost on the assembly. As we move forward, Arav continued, let us not only focus on what brings us together, but also on understanding what keeps us apart. Let us build not just a coalition of policies and strategies, but a community of shared values and aspirations. He concluded, our unity has been our strength in facing the challenges brought by our encounters with Suryavansha and the Kralians. Let it now be the beacon that guides us in our journey towards a peaceful and prosperous interstellar future. As applause filled the room, Arav felt a cautious optimism. The path ahead was fraught with complexities, but the foundations laid were strong. The legacy of unity, if nurtured, promised a future where Earth was not just a participant in the cosmos, but a leader, a beacon of cooperation and peace. After the impactful address at the GCIC assembly, Dr. Ra Arav Singh turned his focus towards the technological revolution that had swept across Earth following the introduction of Suryavanshi technologies. This renaissance had transformed industries and daily lives, ushering in an era of unprecedented innovation and sustainability. In his office, lined with digital screens displaying real-time updates from various global tech integration sites, Arav reviewed reports of the latest advancements. Renewable energy systems now powered much of the globe, drastically reducing carbon emissions. Agricultural technologies had multiplied crop yields while conserving water and soil health, helping to alleviate hunger in the most vulnerable regions. Yet, the rapid adoption of these technologies was not without its challenges. Arav was scheduled to speak at the upcoming Global Technology Symposium, where he planned to address these issues head-on. Standing before a diverse e audience of scientists, policymakers, and technology leaders, Arav began, the integration of Suryavanshi technologies has propelled us into a new age of possibility. We've seen remarkable advancements in energy, agriculture, and medicine. However, this transition has also brought to light the disparities and disruptions inherent in such rapid evolution. He highlighted specific areas of concern, as some industries soar, others struggle to adapt. Workers displaced by automation and new technologies face uncertainty about their futures. While we celebrate our progress, we must also ensure that no one is left behind. To address these disruptions, Arav outlined a series of initiatives aimed at smoothing the transition, reskilling programs, comprehensive training programs to help workers transition into emerging industries, innovation hubs, 
collaborative spaces where traditional industries could integrate new technologies into their operations, making them more sustainable and efficient. Regulatory frameworks, guidelines to ensure that technological advancements were safe, ethical, and beneficial across all sectors of society. Community involvement. Moreover, RF can you, we must involve communities in these processes. Local input and engagement are crucial in ensuring that the technologies we adopt are not only effective, but also culturally and environmentally appropriate. The response was overwhelmingly positive, with many attendees expressing eagerness to contribute to the initiatives. The atmosphere was one of collaborative spirit, a reflection of the global commitment to not just advancing technologically, but doing so responsibly and inclusively. Later, sitting back in his office, Arav felt a mixture of pride and responsibility. The technological renaissance had indeed brought Earth into a new age, but the true measure of success would be how well they managed the societal shifts it brought about. Technology is only as beneficial as the wisdom with which it is applied, Arav noted in his journal. As we shape our world with new tools, we must also shape our society with new ways of thinking and collaborating. In the wake of technological upheavals and political reconfigurations, the cultural exchanges between Earth and Suryavansha continued to deepen, weaving a complex tapestry of shared histories and futures. Dr. Arav Singh, recognizing the vital role of cultural integration in solidifying the interstellar alliance, dedicated a segment of his efforts to nurturing these exchanges. At the heart of these efforts was the Interstellar Cultural Festival, an annual event that had grown in prominence, drawing participants not just from Earth and Suryavansha, but also from other interested extraterrestrial entities. The festival featured art, music, film, and culinary delights that showcased the diversity and creativity of each participating civilization. Arav walked through the festival grounds, located in a sprawling park that had been transformed with installations and stages. He stopped to watch a performance where earth musicians collaborated with Suryavanshi artists, their instruments producing harmonies that seemed to transcend planetary boundaries. Music, Arav thought, has a unique power to bridge worlds. Beyond entertainment, the festival included workshops and seminars where attendees could learn about different cultural practices and philosophies. These sessions were especially popular among students and educators who often brought these learnings back to their classrooms and communities, further spreading knowledge and understanding. In one workshop, a group of Suryavanshi educators demonstrated their approaches to teaching complex scientific concepts through storytelling a method that had begun to influence Earth's educational strategies. Engaging young minds through narratives they can relate to makes the learning process more effective and enjoy a blee, one Suryavanshi teacher explained. Despite these successes, cultural integration was not without its challenges. Differences in values and norms sometimes led to misunderstandings and conflicts. To address these issues, Arav initiated a series of dialogues called Bridging Worlds, where people could openly discuss their concerns and learn from each other. During one such dialogue, a heated debate about resource management practices revealed underlying tensions. However, through patient discussion and the sharing of different perspectives, the group found common ground in their mutual concern for sustainability and the well-being of their communities. Later, as Arav reflected on the day's events in his office, he was struck by the complexity and beauty of cultural integration. We are charting new territories in more ways than one, he noted in his journal. Navigating cultural landscapes can be as challenging as exploring physical ones, but both journeys are essential for our growth and survival. He understood that these cultural initiatives were crucial, not just for peace and cooperation, but for the collective growth of all civilizations involved. By learning from each other, they were all enriched, gaining new insights and perspectives that would help them face future challenges together. As the cultural and technological landscapes continued to evolve, so too did the global economy. Dr. Arav Singh, ever mindful of the broader implications of interstellar cooperation, focused on ensuring that the economic benefits of Earth's new alliances were felt across all sectors of society. This part of the epilogue 
examines the transformative economic shifts and the strategies implemented to navigate this new terrain. The introduction of Suryavanshi technologies had catalyzed new industries and revitalized old ones. Renewable energy sectors experienced unprecedented growth, driven by the adoption of advanced solar and gravitational energy technologies. This growth spurred job creation in engineering, manufacturing, and maintenance sectors, contributing to a boom in the global economy. However, the shift was not without its challenges. Traditional industries, particularly those reliant on fossil fuels and conventional agriculture, struggled to adapt. In response, Arav advocated for and helped implement transition programs that offered retraining for workers and incentives for companies willing to innovate and diversify their business models. Trade, both terrestrial and interstellar, had become a cornerstone of the new economy. The GCIC facilitated the establishment of trade protocols that ensured fair and sustainable trade practices. Earth exported unique cultural products and organic materials in high demand on other planets, such as Suryavansha, which in return shared advanced materials and technologies. During a high-level economic summit, Arav discussed with international leaders the importance of these new trade networks. We must view trade as a conduit for mutual prosperity, he stated. It's not just about goods and services. It's about exchanging ideas and building a resilient interstellar economy. Despite the economic boom, disparities remained, particularly in less developed regions. Recognizing this, Arav supported initiatives aimed at spreading the wealth more evenly. These included investment in global infrastructure projects, educational programs, and direct financial support to nations struggling to keep pace with the rapid changes. One such initiative was the Global Innovation Fund, which provided grants to startups and small businesses in developing countries that were working on applications of new technologies. This not only helped level the playing field, but also fostered a more inclusive environment for innovation. Moreover, with environmental concerns still paramount, Arav pushed for sustainability to be at the heart of economic reforms. This was E. Ident in projects like the Ecotech Cities Initiative, which aimed to create urban spaces that perfectly balanced technological advancement with ecological preservation, serving as models for future city planning. Late one evening, reviewing reports on the economic advancements, Arav felt a mix of satisfaction and responsibility. Economic evolution is like steering a vast ship, he wrote in his personal log. It takes time to turn, but with the right adjustments, and a clear vision, we can navigate towards a future where prosperity is both widespread and sustainable. In the quiet of his office, reviewing the latest defense readiness reports, Dr. Arav Singh considered the paradox of preparing for peace by readying for war. The defense measures initiated to protect Earth from potential Kralian threats had brought a significant shift in global and interstellar military dynamics. This part of the epilogue explores the state of Earth's defenses, the integration of Suryavanshi technology, and the ongoing vigilance required to maintain security. The orbital defense platforms, Earth's first line of defense, were now fully operational. These platforms, equipped with advanced energy shields and offensive capabilities, developed with Suryavanshi assistance, orbited at strategic points around Earth. They not only served as deterrents, but also as vigilant sentinels against potential threats from space. Arav visited one of the command centers for the orbital platforms, where he was briefed on their operational status. All systems are performing above expectations, reported Admiral Chen, the officer in charge. The integration of Suryavanshi shield technology has significantly enhanced our defensive capabilities. On the ground, the formation of the Global Defense Forces, GDF, marked a new era in military cooperation. Soldiers from diverse nations trained together, learning to operate the new technologies and to fight as a unified force should the need arise. These forces conducted regular joint exercises that simulated various threat scenarios from invasions to rescue operations. During one of the training reviews, Arav observed the troops' coordination and the seamless integration of terrestrial and extraterrestrial tactics. This is the future of our global defense, he remarked to General Martinez, who nodded in agreement. Unity in diversity, strength in cooperation. Despite the peace that currently prevailed, 
the threat of the Kralians loomed in the collective consciousness of Earth's defense strategists. Continual upgrades to defense systems and constant vigilance were mandated by the GCIC. Research teams, comprising both human and Suryavanshi scientists, worked tirelessly to develop newer, more efficient defense technologies. Understanding the importance of public support for these defense initiatives, Arav championed transparency and engagement. Regular updates on the readiness of Earth's defenses were provided to the public through various media. This openness helped maintain a balance between vigilance and normalcy, preventing panic while ensuring that the populace felt secure and involved. In a public address about the state of Earth's defenses, Arav shared his thoughts on the delicate balance between preparing for threats and hoping for peace. We arm not because we desire conflict, but because we value our peace and security. Our preparedness is a testament to our resolve to maintain the sovereignty and safety of our world. As he concluded his address, Arav felt a sobering weight of responsibility. The defenses they had built were powerful, but he hoped fervently that they would never be tested. The true success of their efforts would not be measured by their ability to wage war, but by their enduring ability to deter it and thus preserve peace. Dr. Arav Singh stood overlooking the vast expanse of the Green Horizon Project site, a formerly arid region now thriving with Nen, EU life thanks to advanced Suryavanshi agricultural technologies. This part of the epilogue highlights Earth's environmental rebirth, the benefits and challenges of integrating alien technology into ecological systems, and the continuous efforts to achieve a sustainable balance. The Green Horizon Project was one of several initiatives launched globally to restore and enhance Earth's natural habitats using Suryavanshi ecological management techniques. These projects utilize sophisticated climate control technologies and genetically engineered plants that could thrive in harsh environments, gradually restoring the ecological balance. As we see here, Arav explained to a group of environmental scientists and media representatives during a tour, these technologies are not just about immediate gains. They represent a long-term commitment to healing our planet, to making it more resilient against both natural and anthropogenic stresses. In urban areas, the introduction of vertical gardens, pollution-eating building materials, and efficient waste recycling systems transformed cityscapes. Cities that once sprawled gray and lifeless were now lush and vibrant, with clean air and increased biodiversity. The Suryavanshi concept of harmonious urban environments had been adapted to fit Earth's diverse cultures and climates. During the inauguration of New Eden, a model eco-city, Arav addressed the importance of these transformations. Today, we celebrate not just a technological triumph, but a new way of living. These cities are testaments to what we can achieve when we integrate sustainability into every aspect of our urban planning. Despite these successes, the integration of extraterrestrial environmental technologies was not without challenges. Some ecosystems reacted unpredictably to new species and technologies, leading to unintended consequences. In several instances, rapid growth of genetically modified plants disrupted local flora and fauna, requiring additional interventions to restore balance. To every solution, there is a complexity, Arav noted during a conference on planetary ecology. We must proceed with cautious optimism, continually monitoring and adjusting our approaches to ensure that we do not create new problems as we solve others. To foster a deeper public connection with environmental initiatives, the GCIC launched educational programs and community involvement projects. These programs aim to educate people about the technologies being used and to encourage community-led environmental stewardship. True environmental sustainability comes from the ground up, Arav said in a workshop, it's not just about imposing solutions from above, it's about empowering each community to take action, to be part of the healing process. As the sun set over the Green Horizon Project, casting long shadows and golden light across the rejuvenated land, Arav felt a mix of pride and humility. The path to ecological recovery was long and winding, but they were on it together, and every step forward was a step towards a healthier planet. Reflecting on the journey, he penned in his journal, Our planet breathes anew, not just surviving, but thriving. This rebirth is our collective achievement and our collective responsibility. 
may we never forget the lessons we've learned about the delicate balance of our world. Dr. Arav Singh visited the newly inaugurated Global Academy of Interstellar Sciences, a symbol of Earth's commitment to shaping a future that embraced not only the stars, but also the knowledge necessary to navigate them. Part 7 of the epilogue delves into the transformative changes in the global education systems, spurred by the alliance with Suryavansha and the challenges posed by the Kralians. The Global Academy, with campuses around the world linked via real-time communication technologies, offered courses that ranged from astrophysics and xenobiology to interstellar, diplomacy, and extraterrestrial technologies. Education is the cornerstone of our future, Arav explained during the opening ceremony. These institutions are not just schools, they are gateways to the universe, preparing our youth to thrive in a cosmos that is far more populated and complex than we ever imagined. In classrooms, traditional subjects were now interwoven with lessons on sustainability, technological ethics, and cultural sensitivity towards non-human civilizations. This holistic approach aimed to prepare students for the realities of a world where interstellar interactions were the norm, not the exception. To support these ambitious educational goals, extensive resources were allocated for teacher training. Educators were equipped not only with knowledge, but with tools to help students navigate the psychological and ethical dimensions of living in an interconnected galaxy. Workshops and seminars became common, where teachers from various disciplines shared insights and strategies on integrating interstellar content into their curricula. Virtual reality classrooms became a staple offering students immersive experiences that simulated extraterrestrial environments or historical events. For example, students could walk through a reconstruction of the Suryavansha capital or experience the first meeting between human and Suryavanshi diplomats. These experiences, Arav noted, are invaluable. They bring abstract concepts to life, fostering a deeper understanding and curiosity. Scholarships were introduced to support students from underprivileged backgrounds, ensuring that the new educational opportunities were accessible to all. Furthermore, the interstellar exchange programs with Suryavansha and other allied civilizations allowed students and researchers to spend time on different planets, conducting joint research and gaining first-hand experience of different cultural and technological contexts. During one exchange, a group of Earth students collaborated with Suryavanshi peers to develop a new type of bioadaptive technology. This project not only bridged human and alien knowledge, but also highlighted the potential for future partnerships in innovation. Visiting a classroom where students energetically debated the ethics of terraforming new planets, Arav felt a surge of hope. Education had always been a passion of his, and seeing it become a tool for broader understanding and cooperation was profoundly gratifying. As he summarized in a speech to educators, we are not just teaching facts, we are nurturing ambassadors of Earth, custodians of its legacy, and explorers of its future. Our journey to the stars begins here, in the hearts and minds of our students. As the sun set behind the futuristic skyline of the capital city, Dr. Arav Singh attended a pivotal meeting with world leaders at the United Nations. This session was crucial, as it was convened to address the shifting political landscape in the wake of Earth's integration into the interstellar community. The introduction of alien technologies and the necessity of a united defense system against the Kralins had prompted a re-evaluation of political alliances and governance structures worldwide. Traditional power blocks had shifted, with new alliances forming around shared technological, defense, and economic interests. Arav addressed the assembly, highlighting the need for adaptability in political institutions. Our world has changed irrevocably. As we form part of a larger interstellar community, our political structures must evolve to reflect our new realities. Cooperation, transparency, and flexibility will be key to navigating the challenges ahead. In response to the centralization fears expressed by some nations, Arav championed a model of decentralized governance that empowered local authorities while still maintaining coordination at a global level. This model was designed to ensure that local pop relations could have a say in the implementation of technologies and policies that directly affected them. We must balance global unity with local autonomy, 
Arav explained, by empowering local governments to make decisions that reflect the needs and values of their communities, we strengthen the fabric of our global coalition. The shift towards a more unified global governance had stirred concerns about national sovereignty. Some leaders were resistant to what they perceived as a dilution of their power. Arav and his team worked tirelessly behind the scenes to build consensus, offering assurances that the new political frameworks were designed to enhance, not usurp, national authority. The legal frameworks also underwent significant revisions to accommodate the realities of interstellar diplomacy and trade. The GCIC established a committee to draft new interstellar laws that governed everything from trade agreements to extraterrestrial rights and conflict resolution. During a public forum, Arav discussed these changes. As we draft these new laws, we must be guided by principles of fairness and justice. Our policies must protect not only us but also our partners and the environments we interact with. To ensure that the public remained informed and engaged with these political changes, the GCIC launched a series of educational campaigns and public engagement forums. These initiatives were designed to explain the changes, gather public input, and foster a sense of participation in the new political processes. Reflecting on the day's discussions, Arav felt cautiously optimistic. While the road ahead was fraught with complexities, the commitment to creating a governance structure that was robust yet flexible, global yet respectful of local nuances, was a solid foundation for the future. In the high-tech conference room of the newly established International Center for Interstellar Research, Dr. Arav Singh convened a panel of Earth's leading scientists along with their Suryavanshi counterparts. The agenda was ambitious, charting the course for humanity's future scientific endeavors in this expanded cosmic arena. The first order of business was the announcement of the Deep Space Initiative, DSI, a joint mission involving Earth and Suryavansha aimed at exploring uncharted regions of the galaxy. This mission would utilize the combined technological strengths of both civilizations, focusing on areas like dark matter research, wormhole navigation, and the study of exoplanetary systems. Arav addressed the assembly, his voice filled with excitement. With the DSI, we are not just venturing into the unknown, we are redefining the boundaries of what is possible. Our collaborative efforts will help us solve some of the most perplexing mysteries of the cosmos. Further discussions led to the approval of plans to build interstellar research stations on select exoplanets that had shown promise for detailed scientific study. These stations would serve as bases for multidisciplinary research, ranging from astrophysics to xenobiology, providing insights into life's adaptability and the laws governing the universe. The establishment of these research stations marks a new era in scientific exploration, noted Dr. Lena Zhou, one of the lead astrophysicists. They will allow us to conduct experiments in environments we once only dreamed of understanding. The panel also formalized several collaborative research programs designed to foster innovation across planetary boundaries. These programs encouraged scientists from different disciplines and civilizations to work together on projects that combine diverse methodologies and perspectives. One such program focused on the development of sustainable energy sources that could work in a variety of planetary environments. Another ambitious project aimed at creating a universal database of biological life forms encountered across explored planets, facilitating a better understanding of life's diversity and resilience. While the scientific community buzzed with excitement, Arav and the panel also addressed the ethical considerations and potential risks associated with interstellar exploration and experimentation. Robust guidelines were established to ensure that all scientific activities were conducted responsibly with respect for all forms of life and ecological systems. In our quest for knowledge, we must remain vigilant stewards of the worlds we explore, Arav emphasized. Ethical science is sustainable science. As the meeting concluded, Arav lingered by a window overlooking Earth's first interstellar spacecraft being prepared for the DSI mission. He felt a profound connection to the endless possibilities that lay ahead. Our journey into the stars is not just about discovering new worlds, he mused. It's about discovering who we are in the vastness of the universe. It's about growing as a species and as individuals.
In the tranquil solitude of his study, lined with books and artifacts from Earth and beyond, Dr. Arav Singh pondered the unresolved mysteries that still lingered despite humanity's significant advancements. The Kralians, despite their initial retreat, remained a shadowy presence in the galaxy. Their motives, societal structure, and ultimate goals were poorly understood, and their unpredictable nature continued to pose a potential threat. Arav and the GCIC had prioritized intelligence gathering on the Kralians, aiming to understand their behaviors and possibly predict their next moves. We know they are resource hunters, but what drives them? Is it mere survival or something more? Arav mused during a high-level security briefing. The room was tense, as analysts presented the latest surveillance data showing sporadic Kralian activity near previously resource-rich star systems now left barren. Simultaneously, the archaeological discoveries of potential ancient human spacefaring activities hinted at a legacy far more complex than previously imagined. Arav spearheaded initiatives to decipher these artifacts, believing that they could hold keys to understanding not only humanity's past, but also broader cosmic principles that could aid in current interstellar challenges. In a newly established research facility, teams worked tirelessly to unlock the secrets of these ancient devices. Each of these artifacts could rewrite a part of our history or reveal a forgotten chapter of our journey through the stars, Arav told a group of visiting scholars and media. Moreover, the scientific community was abuzz with the implications of recent findings related to dark matter, facilitated by joint human Suryavanshi research. This elusive substance, integral to the structure of the universe, yet so poorly understood, was now closer than ever to being comprehensively studied thanks to advanced technologies from the Interstellar Alliance. Understanding dark matter could not only expand our knowledge of the universe, but potentially revolutionize our energy sources and propulsion systems, noted Dr. Lena Zhou during a presentation to the GCIC's Scientific Advisory Board. These mysteries and ongoing threats captured the public's imagination, leading to a surge in popular interest in space exploration and extraterrestrial sciences. Documentaries, blogs, and forums flourished where experts and enthusiasts debated theories and implications of the latest discoveries and sightings. As he prepared for a public lecture at the Global Academy of Interstellar Sciences, Arav reflected on the importance of embracing the unknown. The mysteries we face are vast, but so is our potential to uncover them. Each question we answer, each mystery we unravel, brings us closer to understanding our place in the cosmos, he rehearsed, looking out at the stars twinkling in the night sky. On a crisp evening under the vast, tarlit sky at an international observatory, Dr. Arav Singh addressed a gathering of citizens from around the world. The event was part of a global outreach initiative designed to engage the public in the ongoing interstellar developments. Arav began his speech by acknowledging the rapid changes that had swept across the planet. In our pursuit of interstellar cooperation and scientific advancement, we have transformed our world. We stand on the brink of a new era, rich with potential, but also fraught with challenges. He spoke of the technological marvels that had improved quality of life and the cultural exchanges that enriched human understanding, fostering a sense of hope and excitement about the future. However, he did not shy away from addressing the fears and concerns that such profound changes inevitably brought. Change, while necessary, can be unsettling, Arav continued, his voice calm and reassuring. It's natural to feel apprehensive about what the future holds, especially as we now share it with other civilizations whose intentions and cultures are still not fully understood. He discussed the ongoing threat from the Kralians and the unresolved mysteries surrounding ancient human spacefaring activities, emphasizing the need for vigilance and preparedness. Yet, he also highlighted the unprecedented global unity and cooperation that had emerged as a result of these challenges. To address the public's mixed feelings, Arav announced new initiatives aimed at increasing civic engagement and public participation in interstellar affairs. These included educational programs, community forums, and participatory decision-making platforms where ordinary citizens could voice their opinions and contribute to shaping policies. The path we are charting must be walked by us all, he stated. Your voices are crucial in guiding our journey.
Together, we can navigate the complexities of this new era. As the night deepened and the stars shone brighter, Arav concluded his speech with a note of optimism. While the universe may hold threats, it also holds incredible beauty and opportunities for growth. Let us not be deterred by our fears, but be driven by our hopes. The crowd, moved by his words, left the observatory that evening with a renewed sense of purpose. Discussions continued in homes, workplaces, and online, reflecting the diverse perspectives and emotions stirred by Arav's address. Later, in the quiet solitude of the observatory's library, Arav reflected on the evening's events. He wrote in his journal, Tonight, I saw fear, curiosity, excitement, and determination in the eyes of those who came. It's a reminder of our responsibility as leaders to guide humanity with wisdom, compassion, and foresight. In the quiet calm of the early morning, Dr. Arav Singh stood at the balcony of the Global Coalition for Interstellar Cooperation headquarters, watching the sunrise bathe the city in a golden light. The world below was waking up to a new day, a day like any other, yet infinitely different because of the journey humanity had embarked upon. As he prepared for his final address as the head of the GCIC, Arav reflected on the achievements of the past years, the successful integration of Suryavanshi technology, the establishment of Earth as a formidable presence in the interstellar community, and the advancements in global unity and cooperation. We have come far, he thought, but the journey ahead promises even greater challenges and wonders. During his speech, Arav announced his decision to step down from his role, passing the mantle to a new generation of leaders who would continue to guide humanity on its path among the stars. He introduced his successor, Dr. Lina Zhao, a brilliant scientist and diplomat who had been instrumental in many of GCIC's initiatives. Dr. Zhou took the stage, outlining the future directions for the coalition. She spoke of expanding the D EEP space initiative, exploring more alien alliances, and solving the ongoing mysteries left by the Kralians and the ancient artifacts. Our future is among the stars, she declared, and we will pursue it with curiosity, caution, and courage. Dr. Zhao also hinted at emerging threats from beyond the known galaxy, mysterious signals that had been intercepted by their deep space monitoring arrays, suggesting not all alien civilizations might be friendly or peaceful. Additionally, she mentioned overtures from another, as yet uncontacted alien civilization that had shown interest in Earth due to their rising prominence in the galactic stage. The announcements were met with a mix of excitement and anxiety across the globe. News outlets buzzed with speculation, experts debated on talk shows, and social media platforms were ablaze with discussions about the implications of these new developments. As the day drew to a close, Arav retired to his office one last time, looking at the map of the galaxy hanging on the wall. Each star potentially a new story, each nebula a mystery to unravel. He knew that while his role in this saga might be diminishing, the story of humanity's venture into the cosmos was just beginning. Let the stars be our guide, he wrote in his memoirs, and may our spirits never falter.